Keiichi Kawakami, born on January 30, 1912, was the eldest son of Kaichi Kawakami, the third president of Nippongaki, Yamaha's predecessor. Genji joined the company in 1937 and rose in the ranks to become head of the Tenryu factory, managing director, and finally in 1950, the company's fourth president at the age of 38. Prior to the Second World War, Nippongaki used machine tools to manufacture propellers for military aircraft and later Genji sought to manufacture something else. After investigating every possibility, he decided to go into the motorcycle business. Looking back on the founding of Yamaha Motor, Genji Kawakami had this to say. While the company was performing well and had some financial leeway, I felt the need to look for our next area of business. So I did some research. With the machine tools we had, I wondered what we could produce. I came up with sewing machines, motorcycles, three-wheeled vehicles, scooters, automotive parts, in addition to the marketing of special woodworking machinery that we made. But there was an oversupply of sewing machines on the market, so I ruled that out. In scooters, the Silver Pigeon and Rabbit models already filled the market and I realized it would be very difficult for the company to gear up from scratch to compete in scooters. Mazda and Daihatsu had a stranglehold on the market for three-wheeled vehicles, and it would be too hard to get into this market as well. With automotive parts, I felt that the Yamaha name wouldn't become known, no matter how good the product, and if the parent factory said, we don't need you anymore, then all of the equipment and labor investment would go to waste. So finally, I thought about motorcycles, even if we were a little late to enter that market. I had my research division chief and other managers visit leading motorcycle factories around the country. They came back and told me there was still plenty of opportunity, even if we were entering the market late. I didn't want to be completely unprepared in this unfamiliar business, so we toured German factories before setting out to build our first 125cc bike. I joined in this tour around Europe, during which my chief engineers learned how to build motorbikes. We did as much research as possible to ensure that we could build a bike as good as any out there. Once we had that confidence, we started going. The building of a prototype went into full swing, and in August of 1954, a mere 10 months from the decision to build motorcycles, Yamaha completed its first 125cc prototype. The prototype was put through a 10,000 kilometer test, a rugged test even by industry standards, to ensure top-notch quality. The YA-1, with a two-stroke, single-cylinder, 125cc air-cooled engine. This motorbike was the dramatic realization of Geiji Kawakami's key decision, and the start of Yamaha Motor. On July 1st, 1955, the motorcycle manufacturing division spun off from Nippongaki and incorporated as Yamaha Motor Corporation, with Kawakami at the helm. The fledgling company had 274 employees, 30 million yen in capital, and produced about 200 motorbikes a month. To sell a good product, consumers have to be informed of its excellence. With this in mind, the motorcycle industry held major annual events, and at the biggest, the third annual Mount Fuji race, the YA-1 made its first appearance and won the race with flying colors. The bike was then entered in the first Mount Asama race, where it swept the top three spots. The victories in these two major races proved the high performance of Yamaha bikes and greatly boosted their appeal. To see how the bike performed, Genji Kawakami himself rode it and led development and sales in the motorcycle business.
based on the firm belief that a product isn't a product until it can hold its own around the world. Yamaha pursued high quality and high performance throughout product development and manufacturing. In 1958, Yamaha became the first Japanese producer of motorcycles to debut in an international race. The race was the Catalina Grand Prix, held in the United States. The Yamaha bike finished high in sixth place, reaffirming Genichi Kawakami's convictions. The race results won over many new fans in Japan and the US, with many accolades awarded to Yamaha's technology. With the overseas experience, Genji soon turned his attention from motorcycles to marine leisure and began developing a new field of business. In 1960, Yamaha began producing boats and outboard equipment made of FRP, the company's first step in promoting marine leisure. Soon after this, a number of complaints against Yamaha's scooters and mopeds placed the company in the toughest spot it had ever faced. But in 1963, Yamaha successfully developed the Autolube oil injection system for two-stroke engines, marking a new departure for the company. Genji Kawakami understood better than anyone else the importance of pursuing quality from the very outset. He had this to say about it. Products are not merely things to be sold. They must bring satisfaction to both the seller and buyer. Something that breaks down easily, generating a complaint, cannot be called proper merchandise. When making products, it is crucial to see things from the consumer's perspective. In tandem with quality, Genji Kawakami also valued original ideas, about which he said. In the future, a company's survival will hinge on ideas over and above quality. Products that have no character, nothing unique about them, will not sell, no matter how well made or how affordable. And that would spell doom for any company. In 1966, Yamaha built a new plant in the city of Iwata with the capacity of producing 800,000 units a year. The first project for the Iwata factory was the Toyota 2000 GT sports car, developed and built jointly by Yamaha Motor and Toyota Motor Corporation. The car was a sensation among car lovers everywhere. Yamaha Motor established an overseas presence early on with its first joint venture in 1966, Siam Yamaha in Thailand. In the same year, the company provided technical assistance to Bicicletas de Mexico and was recognized the following year by the Japanese government for its export contributions. In 1968, Yamaha Motor Europe NV was established in the Netherlands, followed by Yamaha Motor do Brasil in 1970 establishing a foundation for global endeavors. Taking to heart the lessons taught by Genji Kawakami, Yamaha looked beyond merely making products and set out to create demand. Yamaha opened driving schools and trail biking schools, along with boat license schools, and began offering boating and sailing instruction, as well as pursuing other safety-promoting activities nationwide. The company also built facilities such as Yamaha Marina Hamanako, the Yamaha Technical Center, Yamaha Resort Sumagoi, and the Sportsland Sugo facility, working to broaden its markets. In 1972, the company's head office was moved to Iwata, and a variety of new products were developed to enhance people's lives, including generators, racing carts, pools, and golf carts.
In one of his books, Genji Kawakami describes this effort to expand into new fields. In the business world today, so many people seem obsessed with figures. They become fixated on the numbers of the minute and without them are too afraid to do any real work. But in fact, every situation is in flux from moment to moment, developing within a natural flow. Unless one reads that flow, it is impossible to start out in a new field of business. Sales rose steadily for Yamaha, and the company celebrated its 25th anniversary in 1980. 立派な内容を持った Demand grew along with it. In his declining years, Genji Kawakami provided this message about the future of Yamaha. No matter what business you strive to do in the name of Yamaha, I wish you to always bear in mind the Yamaha company's spirit and philosophy. That is, total honesty toward the customer and making products that hold their own. The everlasting spirit of adventure and focus on quality and performance shown by the founder of Yamaha Motor still serves as the wellspring of Yamaha's corporate activities today and that wellspring will never stop flowing. It was the will of Genji Kawakami to live on in the hearts and minds of each and every company employee, and from there, branch out into a thousand, thousand streams.